The grain markets had an interesting spring with the ongoing trade war with China and unprecedented planting delays in a majority of the Corn Belt due to wet weather. So what's ahead for third quarter? Luke Swenson and Jason Winter join us with their insight. And let's talk about uh, the USDA reports. The big ones are out of the way now, but lots of confusion after the reports. And Luke, we're going to resurvey. What are we resurveying and when will we get the results to know what acreage really is? Uh, the final results, it'll probably be like 2009, 2010, when they keep revising until about 2020. Um, they're coming out, they're doing a resurvey of the 14 primary states for corn and beans coming out in the August report, which is going to be tied into crop insurance, uh, certified or FSA certified acres. I'm curious to see where it's going to come. You know, they, the, the subjectivity behind the report was just unbelievable, as you've got USDA people actually online answering questions afterwards within 30 minutes of it, saying we're going to resurvey even though they trust the data, which was taken somewhere between June 1 and June 17th. Well, if all this was June 1, you could argue some of it's pretty relative. On the flip side, if half, or it's not very relative, if it all came in on June 17, you could argue they're actually pretty close. The problem is, is a lot of the numbers, when you break down to the state-by-state -state level, just really don't seem to add up with what people saw probably well into June 20th this year. The farmer doesn't have to give his planting survey, his planting uh, FSA numbers until July. So uh, once that happens, we're going to see numbers in the August uh, from FSA, from September and September and October, and so that's probably when we're finally going to get an idea of what's uh, what's happening uh, for sure or not. Yeah. So what do we use for acreage in the July 11th report? They operate independently, so they're not necessarily obligated to tie to it. So Jason, with the report out of the way now, does the market shift its focus towards yield and trying to figure out what production is like? We could only be in the second or third inning of this whole. Uh, uh, debate basically on acres and yields. Um, you know, we'll have the July 11th report next week. Uh, that could change all, change everything again. But uh, there's just so many variables going forward. Uh, we still got demand. Uh, we still have uh, plenty of world stocks. Uh, plenty of competition from from South America um, as far as demand goes. And uh, you know, and then where do prices go? Where are we rationizing? You know, ration, uh, rationing. Uh, you know, our own demand as far as feed and and uh, and uh, ethanol. So, so this is unprecedented. What we've seen in terms of these historical planting delays across the entire Corn Belt. So, what are you guys using for an analog year to try to help position producers in this light of this situation? Going back, it's tough to find a year. Um, some of these weather guys say this is like a, the the wettest we've wettest spring we've had, or the wettest past twelve months we've had, and almost. Um, going back 125 years, so it's it's I don't you can go back and look at other years, but usually we actually get the crop planted in an okay uh, fashion, and then it's just about the weather going for a while. Here we had such late plantings in June, uh, but yeah, the weather is still going to be very important going down the road. Uh, we're going to need uh, we're all going to be what the market's going to be watching uh, the growing degree day uh, units, and uh, we're going to need some heat, which I think we're we've got some here recently. And uh, but just seeing how this crop uh, can come out of out of, you know, basically this kind of debacle that we had going on through May and June. So we can, I guess, with certainty say it's going to be a very volatile next few months. So let's talk about marketing advice. Luke, first, what are you doing with your clients? Uh, the whole way up, I, I normally love selling options. Uh, this year, as we've been adding sales the whole way, we've been telling people if you're selling, reown because who knows what this thing's going to look like. So we've got some stops under the market that after last week's report uh, with the acres, we might hit again. And if we add 10% there, we, we preference to all our managed customers saying if those get hit, we will be on top of you to make sure you're adding calls because who knows how this thing's going to play out. Uh, volatility is going to be around. The big difference between, say, an, oh, you know, 2007 or 2012 is, as Jason said, we have big stocks coming into this year. So, right. you know, those years we had tighter stocks and a production issue. This year we have big stocks. There's a cushion, and we've cried wolf in different areas for five years. The market's going to make us prove there is not a crop here before they really go ballistic and ration. And like we've mentioned a few times, there's going to be plenty of volatility from now, probably going through this whole next year. And the value of options, whether you're selling and using calls or, or just using straight put options to try to manage this risk, is going to be the key. And uh, and it's going to be important for farmers uh, if they haven't been paying much attention to their marketing to for surely uh, uh, be working with somebody on doing that. Thanks to both of you. Thanks to uh, Luke and Jason for joining us for our Market Roundtable.